Good morning, guys. Welcome to another edition of Lexington Water Cooler News. My name is Rock Daniels. Today is Monday, March the 6th, 2023. Now, on weather today, it's going to be absolutely beautiful. A sunny day. The highs are going to be 74. Lows are going to be 46. Also, the sun's going to rise at 7.02 this morning and set at 6.36 p.m. <clears throat> so let's get out there today. Enjoy some time with family and friends. Like I said before, get some vitamin D. It's very important for your health. All right. Over 100,000 customers in Kentucky were still without power as of last night due to the windstorm that occurred on Friday. This windstorm was labeled as the third most damaging weather event in 20 years for Kentucky utilities. Now, the storm impacted over 300,000 customers across KU service area, causing damage to 2,500 power lines and breaking over 230 utility poles. Now, KU is mobilized all its available resources to respond to the event, including an additional 1,500 resources from other utilities. Now, as of 10.30 a.m. on Sunday, 70,000 KU and LGE customers were still without power statewide. And by 9 p.m. on Sunday, the total numbers of power outages in Lexington was just under 30,000. Now, KU does not have an estimated time for when power is going to be restored to all customers in Fayette County, but some outages are expected to be restored by 11 p.m. today. Now, while others could take until Wednesday, crews are working 16-hour shifts to restore power. Now, KU will continue to provide restoration estimates based on on-site assessment of system damage. Now, Kentucky Electric Cooperatives are gradually restoring power to customer members following the windstorm that occurred. Now, at its peak, there were over 300,000 members that were without power, but the number has been reduced greatly. Now, the Kentucky Co-op crews are uh, being assisted by over 375 personnel and 58 sister co-ops across the whole country. Now, while several co-ops are receiving help from other utilities within the state and hundreds of contract crews, despite this progress being made, many po poles and power mines are going to remain down in 117 of our 120 counties. Now, Kentucky's House has approved a school discipline bill aimed at tackling classroom disruptions. The bill allows teachers to remove disruptive students from the class immediately, you know, without increase, increasing the number of suspensions or expulsions. Now, if a student is removed from the same class three times within 30 days, they will be suspended from the school. The bill also empowers principals to permanently remove a student from a classroom for the remainder of the school year. Additionally, the bill includes provisions to allow superintendents to place chronically disruptive students in an alternative virtual program instead of expelling them. This is probably going to be good for everyone involved. Now, Kentucky Wildcats women's basketball team has already experienced a roster movement with freshman guard Kennedy Cambridge announcing her entry into the NCAA transfer portal just two days after the team's quarterfinal loss in the Southeastern Conference Tournament. Oh, Cambridge, man, you played 19 games. You started one and you had the one season at Kentucky, but she sat out several games due to injuries and undisclosed reasons, all right? So in her statement, she expressed gratitude to her teammates and her coaching staff, but did not provide any reason for her departure. Cambridge played the most minutes of any of our freshmen this year with 273 minutes this season. Ah, this is sad. All right, Fayette County Public Schools canceled classes today due to community and campus conditions caused by Friday's weather event. At least 21 schools have been affected with no electricity, internet service, and building damage. Now, over 20% of households in Lexington, Fayette County still are without power, and uh, district crews are working to repair damages and get campuses ready for students and staff to return, while Kentucky Utilities prioritizes power restoration to schools. Now, maybe today, since you know you're going to be out on Tuesday, go ahead and let all the working class families know in advance. Now, Kentucky lawmakers are discussing a bill to change regulations affecting student athletes in public schools, including one-year ineligibility rules for transferring students. Now, the case of 13-year-old Kira Kubota, uh, who hopes to join Highlands High School's swim team, was presented to the Senate Education Committee. Now, Kentucky High School Athletic Association Commissioner Julian Tackett expressed concern about the possibility of athletic recruiting and collusion among groups of out-of-district students wanting to attend the same school. Now, the legislation may be modified to prevent such abuse while still allowing transfers. Now, Kentucky's two-year college system, that KCTCS, supports a comprehensive review 
of Higher Education proposed by Senate President Robert Stivers, according to Acting President Larry Ferguson. Now, Stivers is considering separating technical education, which would remain with KCTCS, from traditional academic subjects, which would move from the two-year colleges to regional four-year public universities. Now, KCTCS launched its own analysis in December 2022 to review space utilization, academic programming optimization, and other factors. Now, the Senate Education Committee gave a favorable response to Stivers' resolution directing the Council on Post-Secondary Education to study the need for edu changes in higher education. All right, guys, let's see. That does it for another edition of Lexington Water Cooler News. Thank you so much for stopping by. I really appreciate you coming here. My name again is Rock Daniels. I am the Bluegrass Realtor for all your realtor needs and real estate needs in Central Kentucky. Again, join me tomorrow for all your latest news, weather, and sports. Have a great day for those of you with